Hello, Jim here. Selling options is a great way to make some extra income, and I had a great start to the week. I actually averaged on Monday and Tuesday 750 each day or 1500 for the two days. I only spent a couple hours. I rolled trades. I closed trades, and I even had some new trades. So I'm going to talk about those trades at the end of the video, so be sure you stay until the end. I'm going to talk about my strategies and some new things that are occurring in the market. So I think you're going to enjoy what I have for you today. Okay, let's jump right in. I do like to give a quick update on occasion about the markets. I do believe we're going to get a rate cut probably in September, maybe another one before the end of the year with the fact that inflation is, is kind of coming down, employment, unemployment, it's kind of going up. I do believe the Fed will be pressured election-wise or politically to actually do a cut. And I, I see one coming in September. So what will be the impact of that? I do think the markets will probably get a bounce from it. Um, a lot of stocks have, you know, not doing quite as well. I believe like the S&P 500, if you eliminate the top 10 stocks, I read somewhere that you're only getting about a third of the return compared to, you know, having the top 10, meaning I believe for the first six months, the S&P was up 15%. Now, if you remove those top 10 companies, it was only up 4 or 5%, which is pretty comparable to the Dow and then also the Russell 2000. So I do see that coming. I also wanted to kind of mention that I, you know, we're supposed to have efficient mar markets. I think short term, they're not real efficient. I think long term, they will be. People will be rewarded or companies will be rewarded for good performance, but Short term, at times, things that might not make sense. Companies may go down when they're doing really well, or they may shoot through the roof when they're, you know, their performance is questionable. One example is Micron. It recently, it's kind of had a rough, um, rough performance, but because of AI and some other momentum type things, it's kind of shot way up. Um, my point to you is. I also believe there's an emotional impact from when these stocks drop um, and probably an emotional impact in the reverse when a stock goes through the roof, like Apple has recently in NVIDIA. Um, what I suggest is when that does happen, go back to why you originally made the trade. You know, maybe the stock has dropped quite a bit, but maybe there's no good reason for it. I do believe long term the market will um, for good performance will reward those companies. They, the stock price will, you know, pop back up. It's just in my mind, a matter of time. Um, so I call that the emotional stock drop and it's hard not to get emotional. Even, even I get emotional when you see a stock, um, drop significantly. You know, one example would be Polaris. It's dropped, I think, to new, uh, multi-year lows. I believe it's not much higher than it was when COVID hit and it dropped. And there's really no good reason for it. The stores are doing well. They're still paying a good dividend and have plenty of cash for the dividend. And they're pretty, they have pretty good profitability. So I think it'll bounce. Um, I've also seen that with Zoom. I think Zoom will end up bouncing at some point. It's just the markets are just kind of inefficient at this time, so much money is going into these AI plays. And I think that may potentially change, especially if the Fed does or not does. I, I think they will cut rates in September. And once that starts happening, I, I think we're going to have kind of a, a broader um, movement of the market up. At least that's what I'm thinking. It may only be, you know, worth two cents. Um, but I just kind of wanted to mention that at the beginning. One important piece that I find with, with doing any kind of trading is setting goals. I have members and subscribers that, you know, look at my performance and they ask, well, you know, I should be able to do what you're doing, but I've been trading a long time and, you know, I've kind of learned the ins and outs. I've also learned to stay steady, stay in the game. You know, you may get beat once or twice, or you may have a couple of stocks that go down significantly and you get assigned. Um, but long term, stay stay in the game. Um, when I've gone back and I've looked at my performance, 
over time, it's worked out really well. At certain times, it might not have been as good. Uh, just to give you, for instance, when I look at 22 and 23 combined, I actually beat the S&P 500. Now, if I just look at 23, I didn't do as well as the S&P 500. But long term, you know, bringing in cash through interest, through, you know, different types of options that you might be selling can have a pretty dramatic impact. So, so set goals, you know, identify what you want to do. It's important to get wins early. So if you identify, well, I want to make a thousand a month and you reach a thousand a month, then increase that goal. Uh, but don't start with my goal. Don't say, well, I, I want to make 7,000, you know, in a month. When you haven't been trading, you don't have the experience. Um, pick what works for you. And then as you learn, as you get more experienced, then up those goals, you know, you can definitely do more. And that's what I've done. I've increased my goals from the very beginning. Now, I did increase them to 8,000 on a monthly basis. And recently, I brought that back down to 7,000. I dropped, jumped from 6,000 to 8,000 on a monthly goal for just premium. Now, I've, I've kind of wheeled that back and my goal is more like 7,000 a month. I think jumping to 8,000 had me kind of looking too much for premium, trying to make trades and trying to get too much premium and potentially taking too much risk. So um, I think that's important to adjust. I typically adjust on a quarterly basis. I'll look back and I'll look to see how I did the previous three months and what kind of changes I need to take. So I suggest you also do that. It, it It's helped me become a better trader. Um, now, some of the other important criteria, again, is, is being patient, you know, I, I noticed going back when I did some of these reviews a while back that I missed some great opportunities to own some some companies at a good price. And that's kind of what, what I think is happening with certain names at this time. So much money is flowing into the AI um, group, you know, like the Apples and the NVIDIAs and, you know, some of the, what is it, AI and some of the uh, different types of companies that are related to AI but there are some others that have beaten down that, you know, it may be, again, Polaris may be a perfect example. You might be able to pick it up at like a five, 10 year low, which, you know, the opportunity of, of getting <clears throat> a company like that at that kind of a price is really hard to come by. And it's really hard, you know, you can't really time the market. What's more important is time in the market. Um, you know, so for me, that's why I said, you know, be patient, you know, take your time, learn from your mistakes and become a better trader. Um, so what I'm going to talk about in the next part of the video when I share my trades is I had a pretty wide, diverse group of trades. I, I closed several, I rolled several, and I actually had one new trade. I'm going to talk about why I chose to roll the ones that I did and, you know, what kind of trade management I use. I won't go into a lot of depth, but it's kind of an interesting thing to go over. Um, and this will be in my, what I call my planning worksheet. And I actually have all my existing positions in that trading worksheet. I'm calling it my new trading worksheet. Um, and this is what I provide to my membership. I provide it um, on a weekly basis every Sunday. I typically have made updates to it. Um, I have different tabs. I have goals. I have guidelines. I have stock criteria, the things that I like to look at. Um, you know, so again, I, I provide that. I pretty much, if you're curious about my memberships, details will be below in the description. Um, I have three tiers. They're pretty basic um, and they're fairly inexpensive. It's been interesting recently. I've had a lot of people join the middle tier and join the Discord and I've had some pretty advanced traders, probably people who are doing more than I am on a monthly basis. And I encourage that. I'm, you know, I'm learning in 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 a way we're all learning together. So it's not so much that I want to be leading the charge all the time. I enjoy seeing other people's trades, seeing how they're trading differently than I am. Um, you know, so it's it's been interesting seeing more and more people join the Discord and and different types of traders, zero DTE traders, um, you know, weekly traders, zero, you know, one DTE traders, people who are, you know, getting into futures and, you know, things I have never tried before that I probably, you know, will look at trying. I'm, I'm enjoying watching what they're doing. So 
I know I'm rambling a little bit, so let me just cut to the chase. Um, again, take a look at my memberships. It may be worth your while. It's a month to month. There's no, you know, you don't have to commit to three months, six months. It's literally month to month. With the inexpensive plan, you can try it for a week, see if you like it. I have people coming and going. I have people going from one level to another level. So again, my goal is is to provide a service. You know, we're not just beginners are in the service, but beginners, intermediates, and even advanced traders. I want it to be a safe place for people to learn from, you know, others and as well as, you know, become more advanced traders, you know, be on that journey to become a better and better trader. So sorry, I got a little bit rambling and talked a little bit too much. And as always, please hit that like button and subscribe. It I want to get the word out. I want more and more people to learn that they can do this and they can do pretty well with it. So let's jump into the main video. Okay, now I've got my um, weekly planning worksheet. It I've updated it recently. It currently contains all my positions. And like I said before, I share this with my membership, typically on Sundays. So at the very top, um, I've got it filtered and sorted. So you can see that this is the group of trades that I did. Um, they totaled $1,500 for two days. Um, <clears throat> and I'm just gonna kind of go right through them. Um, the first one is ConocoPhillips, and I actually closed it. It was a 105.90, it became very profitable. I paid 14.50 to close it on Monday. And I had, a, with it closing early, I had 124% return um, once I had closed it. I'm probably gonna do a, a, another trade on them at some point, or I may do it on um, XLE, which is the ETF that com has COP in it. It also has ExxonMobil and a lot of the other energy and oil companies. So it worked out. It worked out well. I, I entered this one on six fourteen, and I got out of it on seven two. So fairly quick. The next one is CLS. This is um, a data center type company that I believe provides cloud services. Um, good company. I uh, got into this at three twenty five. I believe I rolled this once or twice, and I closed it on on the second which I guess was yesterday. It was Tuesday, not Monday. Um, expiration was seven nineteen. It was a $40 cash secured put. And I paid $10 to close it. And it was like a 26% return, which isn't bad considering it was a cash secured put. So seven day, 17 days early, and it was a cash secured put. So, and I also like CLS. It has gotten a little bit expensive lately. I believe it may be in the mid 50s currently, but I'll probably look at doing another trade on it. Uh, GCT is the next one. This is a Giga Cloud. Um, it was a Chinese company. It still is kind of a Chinese company. They did um, move to the US and I, they did a public offering here in the US. I believe they're based in California. So I started this trade in March. I think, I, again, I've rolled it several times. Um, the gray, I'm, I'm now using more colors. So I'm using gray whenever I roll. This was a cash secured put at 25 and I rolled it out um, to 816. So I literally just rolled it out another month and I picked up another $128, which is like a 21% return. So overall, since getting into this uh, position, I've made $884 on two contracts on Giga Cloud. So it's it's worked out well. Um, and why did I roll? Um, it just had good good premium. I probably will, you know, see what happens next month. I may continue to roll it month, you know, every month. Um, and I kept it at the same strike because I believe it was a 16 Delta. So it was still fairly safe and it still had fairly, fairly good premium. But this is another, for instance, where I didn't really worry about, you know, taking a lot more risk and trying to earn more premium. 128 was, I'm okay with that. I'm going to do a few more trades each week and make a little bit more. Next is Polaris. This is what, the one I was talking about. This, I did have one get assigned to me earlier this month. It, this had a strike of 80. This is also a cash secured put. Um, 
it's 7831. I believe it's may have gone down a little bit, maybe 76 currently. It was expiring on 719 and I rolled it out to 816. So again, just a month. Kept it at the same strike. I just, I personally still think it's the kind of crazy that Polaris is at $80. This was a $130 stock just a couple months ago. Um, I brought in 133, so I brought in a total of 538 with it. It's like a 14% return. Um, if if you base it on, you know, it hasn't closed yet, so hopefully either it's a sign to me and I start selling covered calls and I do well with the covered calls, um, or it expires and that's the kind of return I would get. So here is Square, um, and I rolled it. It's it was also a cash secured put, so that's kind of unusual. A lot of cash secured puts for rolling. It's right at sixty five, I believe. It's sixty four forty nine, so it's barely in the money. Um, I originally started this on two sixteen, and I've rolled it several times. I closed it on J Tuesday, July second, or rolled it. I picked up an additional two nineteen, so I picked up over a thousand and four dollars since I've been trading this um and it's like a 29 almost 30 percent return and square i'm perfectly fine with owning square at 65 um i own a i believe 200 other shares so picking up another 200 shares i do i use square my son's business is using square i like their year over year earnings um they're doing quite well um you know, so it's it's a company that I'm using I like, and financially I, I do like what they're doing. And they're not crazy priced. I think uh, $65 is a fairly good price. At one point they got up into the 80s, and now recently they've dropped back. They may be 65 today. They may have actually gone up. So this is my only new trade. I did a Home Depot, and this isn't my first Home Depot trade, but I like Home Depot. I currently own um, 50 or no, 47 shares. So I wouldn't mind picking up some more. I probably need to buy another 53 shares to turn those into a hundred. Um, they're currently 336. So this, I did a 305, 295. So a vertical put credit spread, fairly safe, a 16 Delta. Um, and again, the current price was 336. I brought in 261, but I could have literally picked up $755 if I did it as a cash secured put. It would have tied up a lot of capital. Um, but after I did the trade, I started thinking, well, maybe I should have given that a little bit more thought. Um, but again, 261 with just a short DTE, the expiration is 920. It's still like a 67% return if it expired and, um, the 261.24 and the DTEs never changed. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. The last one I did on Home Depot, I closed early, I believe. I be it became very, very profitable. And then last is ARC. Um, I've owned ARC a long time. I don't, I think I have a loss with them still. I don't, you know, this is Kathy Woods. I don't really care if this gets um, taken away from me. It is in my, regular taxable brokerage. And I have been collecting a lot of cash there, uh, mainly for a real estate deal that I'm trying to cash flow. I want to end up paying for the whole, or not most of the real estate deal cash wise um, and, and pay it off fairly quickly. So it was originally 47. It was expiring 117.25. It was 43.87. I rolled it pretty far out. This is a leap. So I rolled it to 12, 19, 25 and upped it to 50, but I brought in a lot of cash. I brought in $784 and 98 cents. Um, capital required you. So you can see it's, oops. Um, I believe I, yeah, I got some of the shares in the, maybe the sixties, I believe I have, there's, these are three contracts. You know, so the long-term return isn't that good. So what I've found happens is Kathy Woods and ARC kind of goes in and out of favor. So I would not be surprised if it drops majorly. That's happened before, and I've been able to get out of these leaps um, or roll them down or back even, you know, not necessarily rolling out, but rolling back. So with all these trades, you can see here I had 15 
and three dollars and sixteen cents, you know, and that also includes the two two trades that I closed. Um, you know, so and that's just Monday and Tuesday. I did do one trade today, which I think I did another hundred and some odd dollars, I think a hundred and twenty-eight. My goal for this week is probably eighteen, nineteen hundred for the week. Currently I'm at sixteen twenty, so another two hundred dollars would get me at eighteen nine, you know. 1850, 1900, something along those lines, which on my weekly basis, I would reach that goal again of, of trying to make 7,000 a month. Um, and this, this is what I provide. I also have favorites companies that I like that I also provide. I have trade rankings that I'm still working on. I have checklists that I use for selecting securities, guidelines, goals, dividends, you know, what I've closed. So, and like I said, I provide this on a weekly basis. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys. Um, and I didn't spend much time with rolling. The beauty with rolling is you can do it so quickly and move on. It, it takes me longer to write up the trades and provide them to my membership. Um, I like to provide a fair amount of um, detail about why I made the trade, also about the company, why I like the company, you know, why I might not recommend it if I don't recommend it, like in the case of ARC. Um, you know, so it takes a little bit longer to write that up and provide it to my membership. But overall, a couple hours between the two days and to be able to make $1,500 is, is pretty significant, especially since a good portion of that was rolling this covered call with ARC. But it's, it's cash I currently need that I can use, again, for making this real estate purchase. So as always, I like to answer my comments. Let me know what you think, what you agree with, what you don't agree with, plus any trades you might be making that are working out really well for you. So thanks for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you next time.